So I'm Conrad Burdekin. Everyone thinks that's Burger King. Um, and I'm a poet, a writer, and a storyteller. And I work in schools most days, trying to inspire kids to do the same. And how did I get into it? Well, I loved English all the time. When I were a kid at school, I were writing stories, reading them out in assembly and all that. And then I went to high school and I didn't enjoy that too much and I didn't do any writing of any sort. And then I went to South Africa to uni and um, I went supposedly to do a journalism degree because they had limits on like how many foreigners had let come and do it and you had to show that the degree you were going to do wasn't offered in your country so South African journalism were a good option and then I dumped journalism and did English <laughs> when I were there and I was just busy on side writing little daft poems for friends birthdays and whatever and then I came back to England and my dad kept saying get a proper job get a proper job we were always like proper job Proper job. What is it with dads and proper jobs? Always. Like, that That was the soundtrack to my upbringing. Get a <laughs> proper job. And it terrified me from as long as I can remember. I didn't really know what it meant, but I knew it was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And have you got a proper job yet? Well, I got several. And they're nearly what ended me. Really? <laughs> like, really. Like, um, so I came back to England with an English degree and went and got a proper job selling cameras in a camera shop. Uh which were all right, but not great. Then I went and worked as an assistant to the assistant minister in a church, which, well, yeah, it was a funny old time, but that's how I did that. I've been an unofficial counsellor in a nightclub. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want to talk about this proper job thing, because I, I had that. That was the soundtrack to my youth, and I actually did get a proper job. Right. And my dad said to me... Um, because I, I trained to be a dancer. Right. This was before Billy Elliot and all those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad said to me, I don't mind you being a dancer and I fully support that, but I want you to have a trade to fall back on. To fall back on, yeah. So I went yeah. and did the proper job. So I really identify with that. But... What did you fall back on then? Well, I, I, I actually stood me in good stead now. So I trained to be a car mechanic. Okay. Which is brilliant because I used to work for him on weekends. So I'd yeah, be dancing yeah. in the week and then come and work for my dad on weekends. Yeah. Um, and he paid me far more than he should have done. I, I, I'm convinced that I, I didn't earn any of that money. Right. And I mostly stood around and went, do what? How would I, I do that? Well, show me once and I'll learn it. Um, but it did give me a real love of cars. Yeah. It gave me a real love of kind of working hard, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and even now, I still really love cars. And I love old cars. Can you fix them? I can fix the old ones. I can't fix the new ones. Because they're all computers. All the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But absolutely. I do have a beautiful old car that I'm restoring. Which is a? Which is a, a 1970 Series 2 E-Type Jag. Oh, very nice. Which is lovely. And it's kind of my dream car. So it, it's enabled me to do that. Yeah. But did I see myself as a car mechanic? Absolutely not. <laughs> and then um, my dad then fired me from it. <laughs> Because I think he knew that my heart wasn't in it. Right. And just kind of went... Oh, so like a loving firing. That's how I'm choosing to see it. <laughs> it might not have been, but I am choosing to see it that right. way. Right, yeah. But yeah, so so I totally get that. Yeah. Having a proper job well... Thing. But tell me about this unofficial counsel in a nightclub. What, so, what does that mean? Right, okay. So that was a bit weird. So I was working in a church and they were linked with another church. And they'd come up with this thing called night light, right? Which was a light in the darkness, okay? That's what the, the, there were a little black t-shirt with a candle on front. And they had a girl from their church who was busy going to chat to old girls at nightclub, you know, as they're coming out at toilet, oh, you look upset, what's up? Just offering a listening ear. And they felt that the blokes weren't getting reached. So that's where I came in. <laughs> but you can't really stand outside blokes' toilet and say, all right, mate, when they're all walking out. So I basically, and it was at the time in Wakefield, it was the loudest club as well. It, it wasn't like a little poppy place. It was lasers and rave and heavy and all this stuff. One pound tequila slammers. Yeah, and I would every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night at 10 o'clock at night be sat in Subway knowing I've now got four hours to go and talk to these blokes who won't want to talk about it. And that's what I did. I went and went, literally, like, went. I mean, the, the club were very keen on saying it, don't, it cannot be any church thing. You can't start talking church stuff. But I would go and try and find folk who wanted to chat. 
And then I'd have to make notes about who I'd chatted with just so I could remember like who I'd seen if I saw them next week. It were hard. So your so your job was chatting up men. My job in was nightclubs. chatting up men, but rather getting them to chat about what were troubling them. Right, and yeah. that, was it successful? Well, it were in a way. I mean, it got to a point where folk would want to come and say and tell me what had been happening like in their life that week and that. So in one sense, it was, but you needed thick skin. Because for everyone who'd say, oh yeah, I'm having trouble at home or whatever, there'd be a, <laughs> a dozen who do. <laughs> Just like... I, I've got this image. Of yeah, young... it's probably the right one. <laughs> <laughs> this image of a young comrade. In yeah, because I was young. I was just just, um, just married. Right, yeah, okay. Just married. So what, 10, 15 years ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 16, 17. I, right. I was like early 20s. So yeah. I've got this image of you. Yeah. Early twenties, not quite got a beard. Oh, I looked about thirteen. <laughs> saying, to, saying to these these, <laughs> these men, do you feel all right? Yeah. Can I read you something? <laughs> and then testing your material out. Oh man. Well, that image is almost right, except at that point I want writing out. Right. So um, I did that, and in fact they had funding for it. So in one way that helped us pay for our wedding because, like, I was getting some money for it. But then I went from there and uh, worked for Sunlight Services, the overall company. So then I started, I was the measurer. You got your own car. I thought that was awesome, a little Fiesta. But I had to take like a bag full of overalls and then go and measure blokes to see like, you know, mechanics. So like if I'd have met you in a past life, I'd have been yeah. measuring you and telling you you were a 120 size, whatever this. But they'd send me off to like coal mines and stuff. And then you'd get folk after about an 18-hour shift coming out, 20 stone, and I'd have to <laughs> measure his inside like it were a nightmare. And I, I don't know if this is, again, this is correct, but how has, 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 has that shaped your writing career? <laughs> I, I've I think, read your poem, so I, I don't know. There could be something I in think that. It certainly showed me what I didn't want to do. And it also showed me how important it is to do something that you do love because it were, I actually I got quite depressed around that time because I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, what this, what I was going to do for all my life. I didn't really fit into that way of doing things. So <clears throat> in one sense, it shaped my career. As in after that, I thought, right, I need to do something. And I went on a writing course. Right. So it was kind of like a reaction to it more than shaping it. But I do think about those blokes sometimes and all the... And I often think if I write a radio play, which I haven't yet, but if I ever do write a radio play, I think it's those sort of characters that would worm their way into there. And, and, uh, yeah. Have any of them featured in your work? Or have any of them Not directly. Um, I wrote a poem once about a guy called Disgusting Dave, who were a bloke who just ate junk food all the time and his tummy touched the floor. And I definitely did meet some folk like that when I was measuring up for stuff, but not... not Consciously, possibly, right. possibly subconsciously, but not consciously. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have said so. I think I think there's something really interesting in, in what you're saying that I think spans across lots of different art forms. So I know I, I've definitely mm. done a series of jobs. So as I said, I worked as a mechanic, but I also worked as a glass collector. All oh, right, very um, good. I worked yeah. I worked in a potato van, hot jack <laughs> potato van. <laughs> I worked in a, a place called Officers Club. Right. Where you, everything's seventy percent off all the time. Oh, I used to shop there. Yeah, they used yep. to have one at Top at Ridings in Waking. Yep, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, work yeah, in that, that officers one, club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, um, I worked. Oh, I once um, before university worked in a sawmill bagging sawdust. Oh my word! So, but I think I don't. I, th I mean, as unique as that they are, I think that's something that we all share in the arts world. I think that we've all done yeah. our time, so to yeah. speak. Um, but what I'm, I guess, I guess how so you did so you, you kind of went. I'm done. How did you then transition in, into right. writing? Right, okay, so just while you said that, I thought of a cartoon. I love Calvin and Hobbes, right? I don't know if you know them, American no. cartoon about a little six-year-old boy and his toy tiger. To him, the tiger's real. To everyone else, it's a stuffed tiger. And his dad's always on about building character, which is what my dad used to say, you know, building character, doing all these jobs. And his kid, Calvin, at one point says, I think I've had as much character as I can take. And that's how I felt. Like everyone right. said, oh, it's good for you shaping you. And I thought, yeah, but it's depressing me. And I'm at. So, what happened then was around that time, my dad died quite suddenly. Legionnaire's disease, he contracted abroad. And he left us a bit of money. 
and all of a sudden I didn't have a physical voice saying what are you going to do what about this job and that was quite a relief in some ways it was very traumatic but it was also a relief and what I did then is I took a year out and went and did an MA in creative writing and then my wife who is probably the one person more than anyone who's given me enough belief to do what I do now she said why don't you write to all schools in Wakefield and say I'll come and inspire your kids to write I do some writing I've got an MA in creative writing so I did and to my amazement a few of them got back in touch right and I went to a school and did a writing workshop and I loved it and then I started writing a bit of my own stuff to use in schools and then I thought I'm going to put one in a book and then I made a book of poems and then another and another and all the schools chatted to each other and that's kind of where I am now but when it's looked from outside people say oh that were brave but I think that sometimes people are braver doing what I were doing before because, man, you need a lot of backbone to do some of that stuff. You do. And uh, that's that's really what I did. And so I've, I effectively set my own business up. Now, as a kid with a dad saying proper job, if you'd have told me I'd have my own business, making my own work, I would have laughed at you because it's the last thing in the world I could have imagined doing. I didn't have enough confidence. Right. Right. So maybe all those jobs helped me with that, I don't know. But certainly with my dad passing away, it took away that pressure. And funnily enough, I now think, it, in fact, I'm fairly confident he'd be quite proud of what I'm doing now. Setting it up on me. He, he were an entrepreneur, he were a businessman, uh, he were a salesman. And I use a lot of that in what I do. And so, yeah, it's nice to think he would be, but it almost took him not being here. To... to give you that push yeah. so to speak that yeah. push you needed to, yeah, yeah. to do it yeah. I know I completely identify with that actually because um, I was making a, a so, so I, as I said I, I started off as, as, as a dancer yeah um, and then I, I with the intent of being a choreographer and, and yeah. I, I, I started making choreography and I was making trying to find my voice my choreographic yeah, yeah. voice and not really enjoying it if I'm honest but then, then I my mum died quite suddenly when I was making a work she got right. motor neurons disease and uh, so I was in the middle middle of a show and, and I got a phone call that said to me she's going to go in the next hour like you need to get it to hospital she's going to go so I broke every speed limit got to the hospital and bless her she lasted another week after that but oh. she, such an amazing woman she worked in care and, and, and so she so you know, so we got her home and, and, yeah, and yeah. I'm quite thankful that she was in her own home but it, it was one of those and I know it, it, it's overused a lot but it was one of those moments where I went actually like life's short yeah. and I need to do what, I'm, what yeah, I really yeah. love doing so I've start, so I, that was the point where I started transitioning to digital because I've yeah. always made films yeah. I've always loved it now I make loads of films I've just, we're just starting this podcast yeah. um, and, and I make a lot of digital stuff and, every, and I don't know if you go through this um, but I have, I have peaks and troughs yeah. so I, like, I love what I do I can't imagine yeah, yeah. not doing what I do I still get the oh you get a proper job thing yeah. and to my point is I've got a proper job <laughs> and, and, and I love it yeah. But I still have moments where I get a bit, not depressed, but I get a bit down and I just think, yeah. oh, God, it's so hard. You know, when you're yeah. freelance or self-employed, yeah, and you've yeah. got to find the next gig. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I've been really lucky because I haven't been out of work yeah. since, I, since I, I started my career, really, for, for any, for any long, yeah. I mean, I've had months, but for yeah, any long yeah, period yeah. of time. Um, and, and I was saying to you earlier um, that I'm taking some time off this year to reconnect with, with my voice. Yeah, no, and I again, that were a good idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't know if it's... It, I mean, we're of a certain age now, so mm. and I, I've really noticed that, that you know, there's the whole two other generations of young artists coming through yeah. now. So we're kind yeah. of seen in a different yeah, light yeah. to probably what we see ourselves. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it feels really luxurious to take time off. But yeah. actually, I think what you're saying, what really resonates with me is, is it's about reconnecting with your voice and refinding what your voice is. Definitely, definitely. Um, and then in, in terms of in line to that then, how did you how did you then transition? So you still make stuff in schools. Yeah. Um, and that's how we met, in a, yeah, working yeah, with yeah. a school group. Um, but how did you uh, then become a published author? So um, my first books are self-published. So I did it all myself, which to me is also quite amazing. So especially with poetry, what happens is there are very few published children's poets unless you're a Michael Rosen or a Paul Cookson or the big ears so I sent stuff off to various people and got refusals and then I had a bit of a moment where I thought well what what am I going to do here because I've got all these poems and I've tried them on kids and they like them and then I researched self-publishing 
and it was basically what it said was if you self publish you'll sell about 300 books friends family friends of family any more than that they'll be under your bed now my general character is to be a bit like oh right okay then I, I won't do that but for some reason I did do it I thought and I found and, and also I, I, I want stuff to be excellent so if I was self publishing I wanted a book that looked like a published book that were edited properly set out you know properly made mm -hmm. the whole thing so I found a guy uh, who does that kind of thing used to work in books and now he prints and all sorts and I found an illustrator from Barnsley and I put it all together myself and he helped me and he printed them and then one day I got a thousand books land up on the doorstep on a pallet and I don't know if you well actually you can see a thousand books there's two thousand behind camera here but it, were, it looked a lot to me the yeah, guy yeah. that came said is this the right address because he was used to delivering to warehouses and stuff and that was in July several years ago and my twin brother said I bet you sell them all before Christmas and I was like as if we're coming up to school holidays anyway uh, Christmas Eve I sold my last one wow. so the first thousand went and I thought that were ace I love the selling I love all that so I've done a few like that myself and because I'm in schools and it's a face to face audience a lot and then for my latest book uh, a small independent publisher in Huddersfield knew about me from long ago he was one of the people I sent my stuff to many years ago Right. and he said we've got a space for another poet and so hence that one is now going to be published by him yeah so you didn't go down the amazon no it no was very... um i wanted it to be as good as possible with someone with expertise in terms of pagination mm -hmm. and all that stuff so i didn't go down and haven't gone down that right route. what that also gives me is a lot more autonomy because um amazon take quite a chunk whereas right. once i've sold however much i pay out initially all the profits mine so when i see and this is where i come about the business side of it i don't fit into the sp standard creative don't think about money you know it's all about the work i actually quite like both sides so if i see a line of kids at a school waiting for my books i'm thinking that's four quid a kid that get in <laughs> i'm like yeah it's great but but having said that when i get things like a while ago a mum came towards me teeth missing bedraggled and she looked like she was going to clobber me and when she came up to me she went uh, I can't even remember his name Kian I think it were ah, Kian he got one of your books and uh, he sleeps with it under his pillow every night his first book he's ever had and you know you hear something like that and you're like wow <laughs> I mean, that's, that's amazing that's amazing that's giving me a goosebump yeah, that's yeah. amazing and stuff like that happens quite a bit and it's that's that's really great fab yeah. that's fab yeah. I mean yeah. it's and it's stuff like that I guess that just kind of keeps inspiring it is it is absolutely it's very inspiring and my stuff isn't serious. Um, again, other people who do what I do, other poets, a lot of them are like stand-up comics for kids and I'm not quite in that mould either. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm like a bit of a lot of different creative types, right. if you see what I mean. Yeah. I, I don't fit the stereotypical bonkers poet type, although I'm a bit daft. I don't fit the kind of creative type that doesn't really know what else is going on around in the world. I don't fit the business type quite because I'm also doing lots of good... I don't know. I don't yeah, yeah. quite know. what It's like a whole load of stuff melded into into one. Into really. the Conrad package. Into the Conrad package. And, yeah. and I have to say, Conrad, we're, we're recording this in your house and I'm getting a blast from the past. You live near a car mechanic, don't you? Yes. I'm going to go do a bit of work in a minute. <laughs> earn, earn a few quid on the side. Yeah, he's been doing that for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so... Um, Kind of just to finish off then, Conrad, what um, advice or tips would you give any kind of either young writer or or, or, or older writer, yeah, novice yeah. new writer, what, what tips and advice would you give them? Right. Well, in terms of getting published, I wouldn't have loads other than keep trying and keep sending stuff off because it took me ages and I still haven't got stories published. I'd love to. But in terms of writing write something that feels right for you that would be my main one because mm -hmm. it's easy to try and imitate other folk but that don't work so well and if you're determined to put your stuff in a book which a lot of people are i got some good advice years ago know who you're going to sell them to because know your audience know your audience like david the guy who does my books he said he's had people come and they say oh we'll have loads printed and he says well who are you going to sell them to oh everyone likes books but right. there's billions of books. 
Whereas I went to him and said, well, I work in schools, so maybe I could sell them to school kids. And, yeah, so if you want to sell a few, know your audience, but mainly write what is you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good advice, good I advice. I would say. Um, and then, finally, where can people find you, Conrad? Um, Do you have a website? Or? I've got a website, so there's not many Conrad Burdekins, so just www.conradburdekin.com. That domain name wasn't taken, surprisingly enough. Twitter, at Conrad Burdekin. I use Twitter a lot. Twitter's great for linking up people. I love Twitter. Facebook, um, and at my dining room table. And at your dining room table. Well. <laughs> and you're happy for people to kind of send you a tweet? Yeah, yeah. I love Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's great. It's brilliant in schools. We're always, I'm writing poems to kids all the time. And through the school Twitter account, it's not like a... But then the the class will write a poem back to me, or you know, it, it is really good, I think, for linking people up. Yeah, fab. Well, Conrad, um, I've got to say, I'm dying to have a piece of that brie. So I think go for it. I'm gonna... You can have it all. Breeze <laughs> of the devil. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. And um, yeah, I'll let you know when we're going to put this out there. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>